How did Rick Rubin get involved? I don't know. Rick, I know. I know Rick Rubin ain't like me. As Rick rapper, Rubin didn't like you as a rapper. No. Who did he like? He liked Bill and Will. Really? Yes. <laughs> At least that's what Jay told me. Because <laughs> you guys were on what Deaf American, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I swear to goodness, man, that's what Jay told me. That Rick Rubin ain't really fuck with me. He like Bushwick and Will. Well, you know, I, I'd also heard that like Rick Rubin didn't like Flavor Flav. So you know, this this guy. Fuck it, I don't like Flavor Flav. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like I, like I remember reading something with with Chuck D saying that that Rick Rubin wanted Flavor Flav out the group. Oh and, no, you can't do that. Yeah, and, oh, and no. Chuck Flav, was like, Nah, family. y'all that's... y'all gotta like Flav gotta be in the group for this to work. Yeah, yeah. Flav is my dude. Like that's that dude. So it was Rick Rubin trying to get you out the group? I don't think that Jay was gonna let that happen. Yeah. It was a certain connection that I had with the streets that dude saw. And um that was not that wasn't even a an option. No, sir. Okay. Well, because Deaf American and Rap a lot, it, it didn't last that long, did it? Like a couple albums? Was it was a the, I the think it was one be, album. One but album. See, that's the part of the business that I don't know about. Okay, because that was Jay's business. That's his business. Yeah. You know. All I know is we had um, some Rick Rubin shit going on, and then the next minute I knew we was on priority. Was was Rick Rubin involved musically in in the Ghetto Boys album? Because I mean, you you can't take away Rick Rubin's musical genius. I think he might have did the Gangster Love with the uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Okay, that was about it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think so though. Because I remember I, I talked to Sir Mix a lot, and you know, he told me how Rick Rubin came in and saw the vision of Baby Got Back and messed around with it a little bit and made it to what it was. It was like the second to the last song I made on the record, so it was like I thought I was doing a filler track, and uh, I sent it to Rick. I said, Rick, man, I'm, I'm you know I got two more songs. This one's called Baby Got Back. And Rick is real calm. He listened to the song. About 30 minutes later, he calls back. Mix. I said, yeah, yeah, Rick. That baby got back song? So yeah, he said, get ready to make a lot of money. That was it. I said, Rick Rubin said I'm going to make a lot of money. Shit, let's polish the song off. So he's the one that had me put, um, you know, every now and then you'll see a four bar and you see a drop on the fourth bar for my punchline. He's the one that did that. He wanted the lines that could offend people even accentuated. What's interesting about that story is that Mixlot told me he's made at least a hundred million dollars off of Baby Got Back. Who? Rick Rubin? I'm sure Rick Rubin got a nice cut too. But between the publishing and and everything else like that, he said about a hundred million. God damn. He said his lifestyle hasn't changed much since that song came out. And that was what twenty some years ago. Getting money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my advice to any artist, man, is get your money, man. Be careful. Because at the end of the day, it's business. It's friends, and it's business. They're two different words with two different meanings. Mm-hmm. So, make sure that your friends stay where your friends at in your business. Stay where the business at. Even if you're in business with your friend, you got to separate the two when it comes to the two. I mean, although a lot of businesses have a, a basic element of friendship and respect, I feel I feel the best. The best businesses are like that. You know, like okay. like for, for for example, like growing up in hip hop, I used to always think that in order to get rich, you got to rob motherfuckers, right? You know, you got to steal and rob motherfuckers. You saw so many stories about that. Like, so-and-so became rich. Oh, no, not, don't not stop me. Right? But when I started reading, like, books by, like, Warren Buffett, you start realizing that the people that are actually really wealthy really do straightforward business. They ain't robbing nobody. Because once you get a reputation for robbing motherfuckers, people will stop working with you. 
Like, you know, you know how many deals I've turned down with people that just have a reputation of not doing good business, even though there's money on the table and so forth? I let that shit go. Mm -hmm. You know how you know, many people wanted to buy Vlad TV that I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't care how many millions you're putting up right now. I'm good. We're not going to fuck up this business. That, you know, I, I literally put my blood, yeah. tears, you know? Yeah. I'm good. If, yeah. if I can't fuck with you, if I, if I don't respect you and you don't respect me, and I, then how can we do business? I, we together? can't do no type of. I don't care what the contracts say. Right. You could break any contract. You really can. You really can. It's a given. Yeah. So so if, if it ain't like you know the people I made the most money with, it's always been like a close, like a friendship, a respect. It's always you know whenever there's a problem, we sit down, we work it out, we right. find a compromise. Ain't no funny shit going on in the background. Mm -mm. We both make our money. We keep it moving. We could go have dinner afterwards and yeah. talk shit. Yeah, that's how it go. Like you, 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 you get out there and you, you tie your shoes and you fight and you shake hands when it's over with. Yeah, that's how it goes. But it, but it's fair. Yeah. No, no one has to walk away feeling like the other person took advantage of them. They shouldn't. They have shouldn't to walk away. They shouldn't. And and if they do feel that way, it's probably not going to last. You know, like and you know, for example, like, like the NWA movie. It's like you watch it and. You just feel that things could have worked out differently. They they could have worked out differently. Like, I think that's what every independent label, and 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 the um, and the premier artists. Yeah, I think that that's with all of them. Like like I felt that they could have made Ice Cube happy, and Ice Cube was such an integral part. Like imagine if if N.W.A. never broke up, because because I'm gonna tell you. You know, and I keep it 100. N.W.A. is my favorite rap group of all Just time. Shit, mine too. You see what I'm saying? Well, then I, 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 I love the Ghetto the Boys. Quest. I love the Ghetto Boys, but but I I would have to say N.W.A. is. I like I, I don't I say it all the time, man. Ghetto Boys is my foundation, man, and I, I, I love what what transpired from that. But if we could have took a little more time and, and and put a little more effort, I. I, I take full responsibility because I should have sat down a little bit more and, and fucked with it a little more, man, and, and really made it, you know, as dope as I could from my point. You know, I did a few beats on there. You know, I wrote a few rhymes on there. I think I could have made it a lot fucking better, you know, to where it would be comparable, you know, in comparison to an NWA album. Mm. Because if you listen to the N.W.A. album, the quality of the motherfucker, and then you pop in gripping on the other level album, and you're like, hmm. You straight out of Compton, and then, you know, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, uh, 100 Miles and Running, and then. Um, well, you guys didn't have a Dr. Dre producer. No, nah, we had a Ready Red, though. You had Ready Red, and you had, and we had a, a me. Right. And a B, though. Beat up. We had some shit in there. We had some shit. But but Dre Dre's ear is a little bit different. Like especially on the mixing side. You know, when you listen to, for example, the Compton album, like the way it sounds sonically is just on a different space. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? It's, it's like, kinda like, like to the point where it just kinda <laughs> piss you off. <laughs> like, man, you can't be that fucking dope. Yeah. But he's that fucking dope, man. Yeah. He's that dope. Yeah. Like sonically and I always say, man, like sonically that album is Second and none. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that sonically, my uh, album, in as far as loudness is concerned, is there. I got them ears too, though. My shit may not be as big as Dre's. But they're just as good. <laughs>